So, Dr. Scholz, we've been asking patients to leave their questions in, you know, in our comment section of our videos, and one of the big topics that we've been asked to cover is actinium. Now, actinium um, is not yet approved in prostate cancer, but I thought maybe we could discuss what it is and what the trials are showing so that we can kind of show what the pipeline of prostate cancer treatments look like and also um, give hope to a lot of people because we've seen some positive effects here. So, first of all, can you explain what um, actinium is, but also PSMA? Right, well, the two go together. So PSMA has been one of the most monumental discoveries as the researchers have exploited this. Uh, PSMA is a molecule on the surface of um, prostate cancer cells uh, that uh, allows researchers to design or to develop monoclonal antibodies that will clip onto that molecule, the PSMA antigen on the surface of prostate cancer cells. And so what this means is they can inject stuff into your bloodstream and these antibodies will swim around and then clip onto the cancer cells exclusively or almost exclusively. That offers several opportunities. Of course, we have PSMA PET scans, so they can put a low energy radiation emitting molecule such as gallium and then put you in a scanner and they can look for hot spots and find out where the cancer is. That's really cool. Then they can also put high energy radioactive molecules uh, like lutetium or actinium, which are strong enough after clipping onto the surface of the cancer cell to kill the cancer cell. So this uh, is all originating from PSMA technology and uh, actinium will be the next step in that the actinium molecule or radioactive molecule is even stronger than lutetium and the hope is that it'll have an even more thorough effect at killing cancer cells. Before I get to my next question, I just want to remind you that we're a nonprofit, and if you would like to join our cause, you can do so at pcri.org forward slash donate. Now back to my next question on actinium. So one of the things about lutetium is it's a beta, you know, emitter, and where actinium is an alpha, you know, uh, emitter. So my thought process is if actinium is a stronger medicine attacking cancer, does that mean the side effects would also be stronger and would the patients be experiencing more? Well, the really cool thing is that uh, radiation can be very powerful, but depending on the type of radiation, they can control how far the radiation goes before it decays and stops radiating. The actinium uh, molecule is advantageous in that although it's very powerful, it's only powerful over a very short distance. So it's not going to shoot past the cancer cells and hit other sensitive normal cells with the same frequency that other types of radiation would. And the studies that have been done with actinium, and there's not a lot of studies, you know, hundreds of patients have been treated with actinium, but it's, uh, it's still very early in the development process. The side effects are very similar to what we've seen in the lutetium studies. Uh, there is PSMA uh, molecules on the surface of our salivary glands, and so people can get radiation to the salivary glands, and that can cause a dry mouth. The cancer is located in the bones, and sometimes the radiation can spill over and affect the bone marrow. The bone marrow is where they make red cells and white cells and platelets, so some people can develop some anemia uh, or low white blood cell counts as a result. These are not prominent problems with either actinium or uh, lutetium but they can occur. Are there any ways to protect the salivary glands? I'm not aware of any ways that have been developed. The good news is that although some people are getting very irritating degrees of dry mouth, many are not. And uh, it does seem, in the experience I've had, that the patients that run into that, that after the treatment is, course is finished, that the symptoms do improve and the salivary glands tend to bounce back. So in the studies that have occurred with actinium, what has been these like scenarios? Are patients, you know, hormone refractory or in what scenario are they in? And also what effects have we seen that the actinium has had? Yeah, so the reason we're talking about this is that the results uh, have been pretty impressive. New treatments are usually tested after all the standard t treatments have stopped working. And those are the most difficult types of patients to treat. The most, they have the most stubborn and the most advanced cancers. So if you can move the needle in those patients, you really got something meaningful. And if we were to see, you know, response rates of 10 to 20 to 30 percent, that would be a potentially useful treatment. Um, actinium responses so far are more like in the 60 to 70 percent range. So, uh, and a, a response just for purpose of definitions in the prostate cancer world is where if someone's PSA has been rising and then 
the new treatment is administered, such as actinium, uh, PSA levels then subsequently drop by at least 50% from the starting point. So if the PSA was uh, going, you know, 50, 60, 100, and then the treatment is b initiated, then subsequent to initiating the treatment, the, the PSA drops at least below 50, if not lower. And that is happening in over half of the patients. Uh, these very advanced refractory patients uh, are showing responses, 50% uh, decline uh, in PSA or more in over half the patients that have had this treatment. So it's, it's really, it clearly works. You mentioned the fact that we're going to see a PSA decline. Would we also see a decline in actually visualizing the tumors on that PSMA scan? Would we see, you know, less tumors? Can we see it on imaging that it's actually working? Yes, indeed. And uh, we certainly see that. The other issue, of course, is after these people experience these remissions is what kind of durability do, do we see? Oftentimes if you're taking Taxotere, it works great, but then you, as soon as you stop it, the PSA goes up. Uh, we've seen very nice responses with lutetium, but when we stop it, we tend to see the PSA start to go up pretty quickly. One of the things we, is being reported with actinium is that the uh, responses are, are more sustained, uh, that a certain percentage of the patients still have low stable PSAs more than a year after the treatment. So not only are responses frequent, but they seem to be more durable as well. Have we seen actinium work better in like oligometastatic patients where there's less, you know, um, lesions or would it be widespread disease as well? It's gonna work equally. Well, one of the problems with actinium is it's an artificial element that was created because it has these specific nuclear properties of emitting an alpha particle over a specific distance for an appropriate period of time and so that you can dose it safely and achieve these benefits. And so it's actually quite difficult to make and there's not a lot of it. So the only people that I'm aware of that have received it are people with advanced metastatic disease that isn't responding to other treatments. So we have relatively little experience and I'd say going forward, we would be um, very excited about actinium uh, if the uh, manufacturing process was more uh, accessible. There are clinical trials ongoing in the United States and uh, patients who uh, don't have other options should go on to clinicaltrials.gov and other places to find centers that are researching this because it clearly is a type of treatment that is effective. With actinium not, you know, being approved and coming to fruition yet, but we do have lutetium 177 approved, why would someone choose to go on a clinical trial for actinium if lutetium is available? I think we're talking about patients that have already had lutetium, and uh, lutetium is covered for six cycles, and after that insurance won't cover it, and it's very expensive. Uh, there's also patients who take lutetium and don't seem to benefit that much and uh, don't have other options. The patients that I've seen, and I've had a couple now that have gone on actinium, uh, had both undergone previous lutetium treatment and it wasn't working for them. Those patients uh, benefited and did respond. Uh, so it appears that actinium being an alpha emitter has more punch than lutetium does. Obviously, if patients have... Uh, coverage for lutetium. It's a much more accessible and it's certainly an effective treatment and uh, I wouldn't counsel anyone to go ap seeking actinium treatment. I think it's too new and, and we're still learning about it when they have access to lutetium. Lutetium is an FDA approved treatment that we um, we know ha is effective and tolerable. In my own practice I have a number of patients that are on lutetium as we speak but um, after that stops working other options that are out there are limited and actinium looks like one of the better options if people can get it on a clinical trial. So today we talked about actinium. Actinium is not yet approved, but the reason we're bringing this up is number one, you guys requested this video, so thank you so much for leaving your comments and your questions in the comment section of our videos. It really helps us to know what you want to learn more about. Um, number two, we wanted to bring it up because for people who have been on Lutetium 177 and have not seen the PSA decline that was needed, actinium is an option, and it's not one of those situations. I think sometimes people think that since actinium is kind of similar in how Lutetium 177 
177 is designed that it would work the exact same way, but that's not the case. If lutetium-177 hasn't worked, there is a possibility that actinium will. And so it's good to know that those clinical trials are available. So if you're in that situation, um, we'll go ahead and link the clinicaltrials.gov link for actinium in the description of this video, and you can go ahead and see it there. But I would talk to your doctors. I would present it as an option. Maybe your doctor is not as familiar with actinium or the clinical trial, and you can do your research, get a second opinion, and bring this up. The important things are this. Number one, there's hope. There are different tools in that toolbox that um, sometimes are not widely talked about, but sometimes they do exist, like actinium, in clinical trials, and it's good to know. Number two, there is an option past lutetium-177. And number three, hopefully with actinium, we will see approval in the coming years with it. We have seen some really great responses in the clinical trial, which I also will link in the description below this video. And it's just good to know. You know, part of this prostate cancer process is not just saying I'm on this treatment and it's working for now, I think a good thing to do for um, emotional and mental health is to make sure that you know that you have other options down the line and researching those options ahead of time is always a good idea. Thank you so much for watching this video. We appreciate that you trust us. Again, please leave your questions and your comments below in the comment section because it really does help us develop content because we want to make sure that we're answering your questions. Um, also, you know, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have a lot of people who watch our videos and they do not subscribe, but the more people subscribe, the more YouTube picks us up as a, you know, um, source for education for a lot of people and it pushes us out organically to people all over the world. So please click that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching. We appreciate it. If you need help with your particular case, you can contact our helpline at pcri.org forward slash helpline. I hope you have a great week and please remember most of all, you're not alone.